Falke, biologist and plant expert with Ivy Organics, where we grow cool plants. And today, we're going to be talking about persimmons, persimmon care, uh, persimmons to be looking for, the different varieties, um, as well as we're going to um, begin doing some pruning, and we're going to be discussing the right time of the year for pruning your plants as well. And then we're going to conclude with spotting some problems that um, I've identified within the tree and how we're going to correct it using Ivy Organics. Uh, the first thing I want to do is I want to share these fruits with you. And this here is of the Fuyu variety. It's a Chinese variety of persimmons. Um, you can see they can grow in quite beautiful clusters of fruit. And this is a basket I've just um, harvested as well from the tree behind me. And I've also prepared some of these fruits as well. And when it comes to the persimmons, there's two varieties of persimmon fruit. There is the stringent variety and then the non-stringent variety. And this here is one of the most popular of the non-stringent varieties, um, again, called the Fuyu. And when it comes to stringent or non-stringent, the difference is, as you can see here, these are quite crisp. You can see that the juiciness is right here in the center, but you can actually eat it as firm as an apple, and it's still quite sweet. Whereas the stringent varieties, you gotta wait for them to become jelly-like. They've gotta get that soft before you can truly enjoy the sweetness of those fruit. Take a look at the tree and how low, how full they are with fruit. So the first thing we're gonna look at is pruning and when's the right time to prune your trees. And come around so you can actually see what we're gonna do first. Follow me. So when it comes to pruning, as you can see, the leaves are beginning to fall. We're now at the last week of November, and most of these leaves will fall within the next week or two, and leaving some more fruit behind, and it actually looks very ornamental when the plant is supporting all of these fruits without leaves. And the fruit can remain on the tree for up to two months, um, but keep your eyes out for it. The birds are already competing with us in regards to enjoying these beautiful and delicious fruit. But when it comes to pruning, there is two times to consider pruning. Some people like to prune their plants as soon as the leaves fall. And then there's another group of people that like to prune their plants right before um, spring or in the late winter once the risk of frost has passed. And the, the majority and the correct, and in my opinion, the proper time for pruning is after all risk of frost has passed. And we're here now in Walnut Creek, California, and that period of time would be somewhere probably closer to mid to late um, February to early March would be the right time, whereas for us, if you're in Los Angeles, which is where um, I'm currently living, if you're in the Los Angeles area, your risk of frost usually passes by the second week of January. So if you wanted to start pruning your persimmons um, in the third, fourth week of January and any time thereafter, that would be a good time all the way up until it starts growing. Once it, once it puts out those, those shoots and, and blossoms, it's too late. You should have pruned them already. So you still want to do it while it's dormant, but after the risk of frost has passed. But I wanna share a few points with you so that you can learn some lessons um, that you can carry into your own gardens when it's time to properly prune. The goal with persimmons is their wood is very soft and brittle. Um, ideally, you're not gonna put them in some open space, but you can see that this tree is on a hillside with a lot of open space around it, and it's supported a, quite a bit of fruit. But generally, you wanna put it in a place where it's not gonna to get too beaten by wind, as these branches are quite brittle and can snap quite easily. The goal when pruning it is to strengthen the tree by bringing the branches in closer to the center of the plant. So with all of these branches, and you can see that there's quite a few over here, the goal will be to bring it back probably a couple of feet. And as you can see, there's another nice branch over here. And generally, I go for the branches that are either pointed up or to the sides, but never pointing down. So we're gonna prune it like so, about a quarter inch above and at an angle. And we've made that prune. When it comes to selecting other branches, as you can see, this one here is supporting some fruit, and this one here is pointing more down. We can actually remove this branch like so. And again, I'm gonna cut it about a quarter inch above the next branch, which will hopefully also bloom and support fruit in the following year. But we're gonna strengthen the plant like so. And we've just removed this stem with this fruit, and now we can put this in our bucket of fruit as well. We're gonna continue this process throughout the tree, but again, I'm doing this for demonstration purposes. I'm of the opinion, again, you should wait until the, all the risk of frost has passed for your area. So for us here in Walnut Creek, we're gonna wait until later February to early March to continue this process of strengthening the tree by bringing in the branches in closer to the center. 
Let me do a couple more examples and then I'm gonna share something else with you. So with this branch over here, we're gonna bring it in to this branch back here and we'll just prune it like so. And you can see it still has a nice natural flow of growth. Something I've seen a lot of landscapers do is they'll go and they'll cut the branch like so. With complete disregard of where it's gonna branch and fruit from in the future. Sometimes this wood will die back to the next place where the branches come out. So there is no natural flow of branches and, and, and fluids through the tree to the ends. With the way it is right now, there's no buds near this pruned other than about an inch behind it. So this is a bad prune job and it also looks horrible once you've done this all over your tree. The goal is again, now we're gonna go back to the next um, position where there's a branch coming out and we will prune it like so. So at least now the, um, the fluids from the tree will continue to flow through the branch and now support this part of the branch. Let me share another um, example of what's going on closer into the trunk of the tree. Follow me. So when you prune your branches, you always wanna make sure that your prune job is as close as you can to the trunk of the tree. If you're gonna remove any branches that are you know, on the trunk of the tree, you wanna make sure you position them as close as you can so as the trunk of the tree expands, that those wounds are, you know, eventually heal over and are not exposed. If you take a look over here, you can see this here is an example um, that is okay. As you can see, this here was pruned and the tree will eventually expand and grow and eventually seal over. And here's another example right here as well. But these haven't healed over quite yet. But let me share with you a couple of poor examples, one being right up here. If you zoom in over here, this should have been brought back flush with the rest of the tree. And what we're gonna do is just go with our saw here and clean that up. And what we're gonna do next is we're gonna coat it now with the Ivory Organics 3-in-1 tree guard paint and I'll explain to you why um, by looking at another neighboring tree that's here in the garden. Follow me and I'll share with you the importance of covering your wounds to the plant. Follow me. So here I am with a um, cherry tree that's behind me, the persimmon I'm, I'm looking at, it's right behind you. Um, but the cherry tree, if you come in and zoom in over here, you can see that this here is a branch that was pruned. You can see that it's, um, it's been healing over a branch that was once here. But you can also notice that there's holes created by beetles or termites or some other insects that have now worked their way into this exposed area and now can start tunneling their way into the heart of the tree. And I usually consider the tree trunk that is supporting the majority of the branches, the heart of the tree. If that gets compromised, you're gonna end up shortening the life of the plant and ultimately its health. So it's important to actually have these wounds um, pruned. I would take a product such as the Ivory Organics as a spray, and try to get as much of that as I can into there and then ultimately seal it. Let me share one more example of um, plant disease. So now I'm two cherry trees away. As you can see, the persimmon is just behind me. That's probably about 20 to 30 feet behind me. And this cherry tree, I want to point out a couple other um, examples of disease to be looking for in your orchard is, take a look over here. You can see there was once a branch and this branch was um, pruned horribly. As you can see, it's, it's all rigid and it looks like it was just broken off. And apparently it ripped all the way down the plant, exposing all of this bark, which has since been trying to heal. And you can see the cambium tissues have expanded and probably in the next five, 10 years possibly, this will, all of the exposed wood, which is underneath, and the wood is not the living part of the tree. The living part of the tree is just under the bark called the cambium layers. But this is the supporting structure to the tree. But the thing that concerns me the most is this over here. If you take a look um, towards the top up here, I wanna hopefully make sure you can capture the fact that there's a hole right at the tip of my scissors. And right there, there are beetles and wood destroying organisms that have found their way into the heart of the tree. And with enough of these, and with enough time, and there's another one right up in here, right at the tip of my scissors, you can see there's a second hole um, that I was able to identify. And these beetles and wood destroying organisms will eventually work towards hollowing out the entire center of the tree. 
so that even when this plant ultimately heals over, there'll still be termites and beetles on the inside rotting out the core of the plant and definitely shorting the life of the tree. The owner just asked me just a few minutes ago, are we gonna to have to remove this plant to start all over? And the answer is no. The goal is we're gonna to try to preserve the damage that's done and, and maximize the life of this plant so it can continue giving as many more fruitful years as possible for the family. I'm gonna show you how in just a minute. Follow me. You can turn it off. So here we are now with the Ivory Organics. Let me explain to you um, about this product. It reads again, Ivory Organic. It's a three-in-one tree guard paint. Just add water, a natural tree trunk and branch barrier protection against damaging, sunburn, and insects and rodents for use on your roses, fruit, and nut trees, ornamental trees, and shrubs. And it's a non-toxic, environmentally safe, and organic product. And, um, and you can see here on the lid, it says, save injured and damaged trees, prune and expose surfaces. And that's what we're gonna use it for right now and um, ideal for new plantings and transplants. And this product, um, when you just take a couple of teaspoons of the product to a spray bottle, can be used as a foliar spray to offer protection against sunburn, as well as it's got the oils to also repel insects. And we're also, today we're gonna to be using it as a tree paint, but you can also use it as a tree paste by just putting two ounces of water, a quarter cup of water, um, to this um, can of product. The other thing too I wanna share with you with our gold label product, which is gonna be coming out probably um, late winter to early spring so take a look for the gold label and this here it says registered material for organic agriculture so um, we're proud about the fact that this is now registered material for organic agriculture as well what you'll do when you receive your can of on um, this product it comes with a um, a bag of your paint powder this is an organic powder and then you've got um, a vial over here. This has got this has been shrink um, bubble wrapped. So we'll just take that off here. And so you've got your oil vial and your paint powder. And what you're going to do is you're going to add these to the can, like so. So there's our paint powder. I like to add water first and mix it before adding the oil to it so that the oil doesn't get clumped up into the paint. So now that it's been pretty well mixed in, we'll now take our oil vial and add the oils. And the oil vial has castor oil as well as other oils that are known for repelling insects from your, from your trees. The castor oil is a known repellent to rodents, so if you've got any issues with moles and voles and squirrels and rabbits and any other type of rodents that may dare to gnaw on your tree, then the castor oil is going to help repel that. And now we can fill up the rest of the can with water. And now we've got a full can of dilute paint that can be used to cover all of those pruned surfaces that we just discussed. Let's take a look at how this is going to work. Follow me. So here's our pruned surface that we, um, we just corrected. And we're just going to coat it now with the Ivory Organics. You could coat the entire um, plant's trunk with the product, but at a minimum, your pruned surfaces should be coated um, so as to prevent any wood destroying organisms from getting into it. Let's take a look at the other trees now, follow me. So here we are now with um, the holes that we've identified right here on, on the cherry tree. We're gonna do the same thing and just try to fill that in with as much of the ivory organics as we can. Just pushing that all in there. And now let's take the next tree. And with this area, you're gonna to wanna to coat the entire surface. This is all exposed wood. And before I even apply it, what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna remove, if you wanna zoom in over here, I'm removing all of this dead wood that's covering it so I can better apply the product. And now we can go with our brush and just coat that on. And you wanna get into the crevices the best you can. As you can zoom in over here, you can see that it's also got some sap. So there might be, again, other organisms that are in there that are chewing and damaging some of the cambium tissues causing that sap to be leaking out. But we're gonna to wanna to coat that and try to protect it. 
from any insects that may harm this plant. And we'll just continue coating it. So I'm gonna take my time after the video and finish all these details, but I wanna show you one other citrus tree where I did the entire tree trunk. Let me just show you that real quick. Follow me. And then here's another citrus we took care of about six months ago. The canopy has filled up a lot since we were here last, um, but we basically went around it and coated the entire lower trunk of this tree with the ivory organics. As you can see, we did all of the lower branches and there were some exposed surfaces, as you can see down here. There were some branches that were once here that we've pruned. There's some more suckers that are coming out over here, number one and two. So these are gonna be pruned out as well. But all of these exposed surfaces, they're still coated, but it's a good idea every four to six months to come back and recoat it to make sure that it stays protected as the tree continues to heal and eventually it'll heal over those um, pruned areas so that it'll be within the tree and protected by its bark. Because right now that's all exposed wood that wood boring insects can get right into the heart of the tree and into the supporting structure of the plant. I hope you found this video informative and if so, be sure to like it. And most importantly, subscribe down below so you'll be connected to all the other educational gardening videos by Ivory Organics. Thanks again for watching, and happy gardening.